Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video that has been a little bit of time in the making. That's because I needed to do this thing first, update this radio to the very latest version of HTX. So this radio is running 2.10.1 as I'm recording this video. Now this is for all of you that drive cars and trucks and things and want the steering to become less sensitive the faster the car is going. And there's a pretty easy way that you can set this up and I needed global variables, which is why I needed that update in order to show you how to do it. Now, by default, the way it works is that the steering always gives you, steering is channel two on this particular radio, is always at 100%. And that means that irrespective of what the throttle position is, throttle is along the bottom, then you have the same amount of steering. However, what you really want is you want the abilities when you're going really quickly to potentially have less sensitive steering and it's going really quickly. That means that the less chance you're spinning out or losing traction. A lot of full-size cars do this so that the steering is less sensitive at motorway speed, but it's very sensitive at low speed. So that is how this is set up. So what you could do, I suppose, is set up lots of different steps. So rather than just have two rates that you either select automatically via the throttle position. You might have lots of different individual steps, but ultimately what you really want is you want a linear smooth relationship between the throttle position, which is a bit of a cheap way to guess how quick the car is running and the actual throttle itself. So that's what I've set up on here. So if I pull the throttle, you can see that on channel one, uh, that's 100% forwards and 100% backwards. 100% forwards, if I move the throttle, you can see I only get a little bit of steering until I reduce the throttle and the steering comes in and I get 100% steering at zero throttle. As I'm steering and then I start to drive quicker, I, I get less and less authority on my steering. And we can change how much that changes and also how much it changes when you're going in reverse versus how much it changes when you're going forwards. So there's a couple of things that I've done here. One of the big things is, is I have, if we go into the model menu and we zoom across, I've created a curve. So let me just select this and, and show you how it's set up. So this is just a standard five point curve. You could have it with a flat spot in the middle. So around very fine uh, throttle positions, you always get 100% throttle, but it drops off as you move either side. So the throttle is normally in this middle position and it's going to go left and right. And by moving these points, we can change the relationship. So at the moment you can see that going forwards, which is on this side, it reduces it more. Going backwards, it reduces it less. It's less steep of an angle. So what's that doing? Well, the place that I've used it, if we come out of there and we zoom all the way back and have a look at the inputs, what I've done, I've created, which is I've called VR variable rates. Let's press and hold enter and say edit. I have set it up here so that it's taking its input from the throttle. And again, you can just hit enter and move the control that you're interested in and it'll select it. And then down here, I have connected that output to this particular curve. So why would I do that? Well, the thing is here is what I'm really interested in, and you can see the, the numbers change on the screen, hopefully. As I pull the trigger, we're at 99.7. As I pull the trigger, you can see that value change. That value is something then we can use via something called a global variable to become the weight of the steering automatically. So as this value changes, the weight of the steering changes too. And to do that, what we've done is we've actually used this function way over here called special functions. So let me show you this. Now, this was the bit that I couldn't get to work until now because I needed the update. So what I've done is I've set it to adjust G1. G1 is something called a global variable. It's something that is just like a container to hold a number, and that number can be used in other places. Again, this is the kind of funky, cool stuff you can do with HTX. You can use all kinds of stuff. Um, and what it's doing is it's using the input VR, which you can see here, that's the one that we've just looked at, that it's using the VR to adjust the global variable value. So that means as I pull the throttle, that channel and that value that we just looked at is being stored as a global variable. Why is that 
handy. Well, that means now if it's a global variable, then if we go into the mixes and I go into the steering, what you'll notice here is rather than the weight, which could be a discrete value, um, being something like 100 or 50 or whatever, it's global variable one, G1. And you can see as I pull the trigger, that global variable is changing thanks to that curve that we made. And that is reducing the sensitivity of the steering dynamically as I pull the trigger. So that means now as I come out of all of this, let's go back to the channel monitor. As I steer and I apply the, the throttle, the sensitivity of the steering drops so that I, I have a little bit of steering. As I slow down or brake, I get more steering. So that is the kind of things that you can do with this. Again, this isn't the finished article. You can absolutely continue to play with this. You could set it up that it only works on things like forward. You could have it work so it only works one half of the throttle, all kinds of different stuff. But hopefully that helps those of you that were interested in this. Thanks again for all the ideas for this kind of radio. Now that it's fully supported in HTX 2.10, we can do this kind of cool stuff and also play with Configurator 2. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.